Hey guys, welcome back to another educational video. This week, we're talking about rest periods between sets. There has been much debate over the years about optimal amount of time to rest between sets. I have always been somebody who's taken longer between sets, mostly for compound lifts that require a lot of focus, like squats and deadlifts, that sort of thing. And then on isolation stuff, I usually go a little bit more quickly. And I've kind of always maintained that whatever benefit you get from going quickly, might be reduced by the fact that if you go so quickly, you have to reduce the load. But it never had really been tested until recently. In fact, a really cool paper just got published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research by Longo et al. And they did a really cool study. Now they took untrained people, so that's a limitation. They took people and actually had them serve as their own controls. So they compared short rest times between sets versus longer rest times between sets. And they compared three minutes versus one minute. What was cool was they had them use each of their legs on a different protocol. So each person served as their own control. This is really nice because you can use unilateral training to look at responses and you kind of take away the genetic differences between people since each person is serving as their own control. So a really cool idea. What they did was they then stratified them into two other groups. They had two groups doing two different volume loads. Volume load is quite simply the amount of reps you do times the number of sets times the weight. That's volume load. So they had one group doing three minutes of rest, looked at, okay, if they did three sets, how many sets going with one minute of rest would they need to equate volume load? Meaning how many more sets would they need to do to equal the weight times the reps times the sets? And in general, what they found was they needed about 50% more. So the group doing longer rest periods, uh, three minutes of rest between each set, did three sets. They figured out what that volume load was, and then they had the other group do as many sets as it took to get to that volume load, which on average was four and a half sets. Now obviously you can't do a half set, but that's just how the numbers averaged out. Then they also had another section that was doing uh, three sets with one minute of rest and looked at how many sets did it take for the group doing three minutes of rest to equal that volume load. What they found was that the group that was doing the greater volume load, so meaning the group that was doing uh, either three minutes of rest with three sets or four and a half sets with one minute of rest between sets, gained more muscle than the group that was doing one minute of rest for three sets or three minutes of rest for volume load equated, which was about two sets. Now, what was really cool was that between the two groups in the high volume load group, meaning three sets at three minutes of rest or four and a half sets on average at one minute of rest, there was no difference in hypertrophy. Same thing on the low volume load group. So the groups that were doing either three sets at one minute of rest or two sets at three minutes of rest on average, both those groups gained the same amount of muscle mass, but they gained less than the group doing the greater volume load. So what that tells us is that at least in this population of untrained people, volume load was the dominant factor for inducing muscle hypertrophy. And rest times, actually it favored the longer rest time if you're looking at it on a per set basis. So if you want to use shorter rest times, it appears that you need to do more sets in order to get the same anabolic response. What about people who are short on time? I get this question a lot. What should they do, right? Because if they need to, you don't need to rest three minutes, but if you're resting longer periods of time to get optimal hypertrophy per set, how can you cut down your total workout time? Well, they've never really tested this, but what I've done and what I recommend to people is supersetting opposing body parts. So if you're doing a pressing movement, for example, you can do a row in between sets. Because it's an opposing body part, it theoretically, should not really fatigue you when you go back to doing the pressing movement, but you're cutting down your time in the gym. Now that can be difficult, especially if you're in a really busy gym, very crowded, um, you may not have access to two pieces of equipment at the same time. But again, that is one option that you can use. And it doesn't mean that short rest periods are BS. If you're somebody who can rest really quickly and feel like you recover pretty quickly, maybe you can still get uh, the same volume load in a shorter period of time. It just depends. In general, if you have the time, I recommend resting as long as you require between sets, 
to feel refreshed, feel like you can attack the next set with 100% intensity. Now that will take longer for something like a squat or a deadlift than it will for something like a bicep curl. So it's gonna be exercise individual dependent. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. This breakdown I originally saw was from James Longstrom, one of our team bio lane coaches. So shout out to James. James and I will be soon having a BioLane research review on the BioLane site as part of the BioLane subscription. So that's the workout builder, premium content, video Q and A's, as well as a bunch of other good stuff. And now we are gonna have a monthly research review where we review five different studies that have relevance for strength, hypertrophy, or body composition. So it's something I'm really looking forward to. I think you guys are gonna love it. So stay tuned for that and shout out to James for putting this together. I'll catch you guys next week.